Hey guys, how are you today? Thanks for joining me again today. I have my fancy fur stole, fancy fur stole on. Um, and I realize right now that if we're going to do a vegan friendly um, tutorial today, I should probably take this off because that's not too very vegan friendly now, is it? Um, so let's just not have this on and um, get to the tutorial. Ooh. Not very nice. Okay, let's pretend like that never happened. Um, today I thought it would be super fun to make a faux fur vest, like a little cropped vest. Um, I bought this cute, oh, it still has a little tag on it, this nice black faux fur um, because I wanted to dress up a pair of uh, fake leather gloves that I gave as a gift. And so uh, this was a snood and basically I just, like one of those ones that wrap around like that. Basically, I just cut it in half and used some of the fur for the little cuffs on the um, on the gloves. But then I didn't want to get rid of the fabric because I thought it was really, really nice. And I thought eventually, at some point, I will be using this fake fur. Um, and yeah, I thought it would be really cute to do a little cropped faux fur vest. And because I don't have enough fabric, I don't believe in the faux fur, we're going to do faux fur front and then uh, probably a fake leather or faux leather, my perforated leather, leather that I absolutely love um, as the back. So I'm going to use this little vest I have um, as a template and he should be good. He's a good reference point. I think it fits me pretty well. Um, it's a Lulu, probably like a running vest or something like that. Um, just having it on here. Yeah, I think he fits pretty nicely. So I'm just going to use this as my template, you know, crop it a little bit and, uh, go from there. Let's get started guys. I hope you're ready. Okay, here we're just going to, like we always do with our patterns, start with our center line and then trace our existing pattern piece onto the paper. Then we'll true up the lines after. So just make general lines around the outskirts of the existing pattern. All right, guys. So now that we have our pattern traced out, I'm just gonna slide you over here right there. Um, if you can see, so we just laid the vest on the paper like we always do, and we traced our center front, center back line. We still have fur from the last tutorial here. So our center front, center back line, we made an outline, which is a very poor roughing out of the front neckline, which I will true up, and the back line, our shoulder seam armhole and just a rough guideline of the side seam and I did also mark out where exactly on the um on the little Lulu shirt or the Lulu vest I wanted the hemline to be which was at the top of the pocket so that's right about that point so I'm just going to make sure I draw a nice straight line out that way so we can make our vest pattern all right let's get to truing up our lines Okay, so one thing I was just thinking of while I was chewing up these lines is when I have my little vest on, I have to think about the closure. So I wanted the vest to be kind of like a more, op a more open concept vest, uh, something I can just slip on when uh, it's a little bit chilly or if I'm out somewhere um, and I don't want to wear too, too many layers, but I also don't want to uh, freeze. Now, one thing I was thinking of is if I have something that's a high neck, which is what this vest is, and it's great, um, I'm going to have to have a closure up here. And I don't know if I'm going to always want to have the vest closed at the top. Now, what I could do is... I could put some buttons on it. I could 
have some ribbon, which I think would be really, really pretty, um, maybe at the top and in the center. So truly, I could tie it up two points, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. Or I could take the neckline itself and go right down to the bust point, which is where I really just want to have the closure be anyway. Um, I'm going to think about this a little bit, just a little bit, and um, decide how it is I want to proceed and whether or not I want my vest to go around the neck and straight down or more V-like. I have a feeling I might just keep the high neckline thinking about it because I think I'm really liking the idea of the bow. So let's continue on with having the vest as a more higher neck, um, just a natural rounded neckline, straight down, keep it simple, and let's use ribbons to, as our closures to make it look really, really pretty um, so that we could either have it close at the top or just close at the center in the bust, which I think is great. We only really need two closure points because it's going to be a cropped, um, a cropped vest anyhow. So let's trace our pattern pieces at our seam allowance. Um, with today's pattern, let's see you. I'm probably going to add about a half an inch seam allowance just for safety. Um, but yeah, we're going to do uh, cut two fur fronts and one faux fur, I should say, two faux fur fronts and one faux leather back, and then we're going to get to sewing. All right, let's do this. Don't forget to label your pieces, guys. I'm calling this the faux fur vest uh, front size Lindsay and I'm gonna cut two of the fur and I'm also going to have to cut um, a liner for this one as well because I don't really care for the way this looks on the inside it just looks kind of cheap so and for liners, you always make sure that you write that in a different color so that the person cutting the pattern, if they borrow it from you, will also know to cut to in the liner. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right, perfect. We'll trace our back, we'll cut our fabric, I will hopefully stop shedding, and we will get to sewing. I'm super stoked about this. Um, oh shoot, I forgot. I notched on my pattern where I wanted to place my ribbon. I just put the little Lulu vest on again and measured down right to my bust point just to see where I wanted the um, second ribbon to go. So it's uh, about seven and three quarters of an inch down. And where I'm going to mark my first ribbon is about three quarters of an inch down from the seam allowance. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's trace pattern piece numero de. It's so rainy outside today. I think it's coffee time numero de today. Look at us practicing our French skills. Not really, actually my French skills are really poor and they sound actually kind of rude. Um, it's funny, I'm actually thinking of enrolling in some French courses uh, this winter just because I feel it's important to be able to speak French, especially as a Canadian, um, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't really take to French in school, and I think not because I didn't enjoy it. It's just you had such a small amount of time in the class, and when you're a kid, you don't really ever think about going above and beyond, um, especially in classes that you're not very good at or difficult. Um, and yeah, French was always one of those ones where. If someone were to speak French to me, I could probably understand generally what it is they're asking of me. 
um, but in order for me to speak back is not happening uh, and that's not good I can do better so anyway yeah thinking about enrolling in some French courses I think it would be good for me it would make me feel like I'm a better Canadian for doing it that's for sure guys so we are marking out here again that we're this is our faux fur vest this is our back piece this is Lindsay sized and this is cut one unfold perfect okay great and you know what for funsies We may, I think we're going to, I think we're going to put a liner in the back too. Cut one on fold. And I think I'm going to pick a super fun liner, something kind of, something kind of shimmery, I think, so that when I do have my little vest on, you'll be able to see through um, the perforations. Uh, you'll be able to see a fabric underneath, which I think would be great. So I'm going to pull my fabrics and uh, let's get these cut and sewn. Okay, so I've chosen the fabric that I'm going to use as my liner. It's this really beautiful uh, fabric. Um, it's this Camelot Fabrics licensed from Laura Ashley. So this is a Laura Ashley print and it's really quite cool. It looks like painted flowers. But the underside, which is actually what's going to be coming through the perforated parts of the faux leather, it almost shows up almost like a denim or so. So it's really quite cool. So that's what I've chosen as my liner. So I'm just going to get to cutting and then we'll get to construction. Sound good? I'm so silly. That's Lindsay not thinking for ya. And I'm going to leave that completely in the video because I am not lining the front of the fur vest with the faux leather. So I really only needed to cut one of those pieces. I'm so silly. That sucks. So I've just ruined this piece of fabric, sort of. Ugh. And that is a prime example of what happens when you're off in La La Land, so pay attention. Silly girl, glad I caught that now. Okay. Focusing. I just want to keep the integrity of the, the furs intact. So I really want to be careful with it as I'm cutting it. It's not like cutting a normal fabric, you know, it's got pieces that are shooting off of it. So you really don't want to cut if the furs themselves, the little fur hairs are laying here. You don't want to just cut these pieces off or else when you put the vest on, you'll have these little tufts everywhere. So just be really cautious when you are cutting the fur, um, just to run your blade up against the fabric that the fur hairs are woven into just as close as possible and take your time. Perfect. So that's piece one. So now we're just going to flip this to the other side. 
and I'm going to leave the fat. I'm not going to rotate the fabric or anything. I'm going to leave it exactly as is. The only thing I am going to do is flip my pattern piece. So while it was cut like this, I'm going to rotate it over and cut the reverse side. So I have a left side and a right side. Perfect. All right, I think we should get to construction. I'm actually going to take a fiber. I'm going to go make a coffee and then I'm going to be right back. Then we're going to sew this sucker together. And I'm going to put it on. And then I have to find some ribbon. One thing I think I actually don't have is black ribbon. Um, so I am going to think again as per tradition. I'm always thinking. I'll come up with an alternative solution while I am making my coffee. Oh, it's so cute. Look how cute this is going to look. I've got like my little Chewbacca. Oh, I love him already. You can't really see it. Poor choice of outfit today, black on black. However, you'll see it shortly. It'll look awesome. All right, so I grabbed my coffee and I'm just going to adjust my little camera here. Um, so basically all we're going to do now is pin together the faux fur and faux leather front and back pieces together and we're also going to pin our liners together then we're going to sew the liner to the actual faux fur and faux leather pieces okay so let's get to pinning uh pin your shoulder seams and your side seams together and do the same with your uh, liner and then we are going to sew those pieces separately we'll sew these guys together and we'll sew these together then we're going to marry the two together there's a lot of togetherness happening today <laughs> all right friends let's get to it no more procrastinating or your studio is going to end up like this hot mess a hot hot mess Okay, I don't even have the liner in and I love this. It is so cute. I'm glad I kept the high neckline, like I said, black on black, probably the worst combination for video, but you can see the different textures here. So this is super cute. I'm gonna stop rubbing my chest, <laughs> it's inappropriate, and um, get the liner into this uh, little vest and Put it on. I was so excited to wear it. It's so cute. So all I'm here doing here, guys, is pinning the liner to the entire uh, parameter of the vest itself. Now, one thing we have to be aware of or think about is how the heck are we going to sew these armholes together? Um, typically, when you sew a liner into say a jacket or something like that it has sleeves and you don't ever have to worry about connecting the armholes well in this scenario that's not the case and we're not using a bias tape or anything to bind the actual armholes so we will actually have to sew the armholes together so what do we do in that instance well we are going to have to open up one of the seams in the liner this can be a side seam and that's going to be our little entry hole into sewing our armholes and what i was taught in school is you sew up one side and then you sew up the other side and that's how you do an armhole for a vest so that's what we're going to do um but in the meantime we're just going to pin all the way around our cutesy cutesy little vest and then we're gonna sew the outskirts at our seam allowance, which I've done at half an inch. And then we are going to open up the side seam, sew 
our armholes, pins in the mouth, and then we're going to turn the sucker right side out and put it on for funsies. And I'm going to have to find some more fun and exciting to wear this to. I already know where I'm going to wear it to, but I wish I had somewhere to wear it to tonight. Actually, I'm going out to supper uh, Friday night with a buddy of mine for tacos, and I think this is the perfect little add-on from a taco eating outfit. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's actually a terrible choice because if I get hectic with my tacos, then <laughs> if I get hectic with my taco, then uh, I might end up with taco sauce everywhere. But hey, I'll just have to be on my best behavior because I'm in my cutesy little faux fur vest. This is actually something I've been wanting to make for a really long time. Um, and I don't know why I never have, but I guess I just never had faux fur just kicking around uh, in the studio. So, or I just never really looked for it. Anyway, here we are. Finally getting to something that I've been wanting to get to for a real long time. And I feel very, very, very good with the way things are coming along. And I hope that you do too. Perfect. So now that we are all pinned, let's get to sewing this together. And then we'll take out our one side seam, do our armholes. That's going to be our entry point for both armholes. And um, we'll go from there. Awesome. Okay. All right. So now that that's done, we are going to. Oh, look how cute. So all I'm going to do on my one side seam is just tack two points uh, farthest from each other. Uh, and then I'm going to take this stitch line out. And that's what we're going to use as our entry point to sew our armholes, okay? Perfect. Now what we do is take our seam ripper and rip out that original seam that we made with our side seam. Usually it's easier to pull the bobbin thread than anything. Okay, perfect. All right, guys, we've got full access now. Amazing. Okay, so as I mentioned, what we're going to do we have to sew these armholes together. So it's going to seem kind of funny, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to pull our armhole through that point. Really what we should do is kind of tack with some pins a little, a couple inches of that seam together because when you pull that through that little hole, it can get a little bit confusing. And we're just going to do the same on the other side. 
So we do one side at a time, front arm hole of right arm, and then back arm hole of right arm, and then do the same front arm hole, left arm, back arm hole, left arm. I know it's a little bit tedious, but at least it's done properly and you don't have to worry about putting bias tape on anything, right? God, I love coffee. I love coffee when it's raining out. It's my favorite. Okay, let's do this. There we go, it's looking pretty cute. Oh, I have a puckerage here that I just have to fix, but it's coming along really, really nicely. Let's start to pull out our little ends, which is great. Look how sweet that is. He's so cute. I love him. My sweet little faux fur vest. So nice. All right, we'll get to the other side and then I'll get it on. Sound good? I guess it'd be nice to see my eyes. It's like the reverse Wilson from Home Improvement. <laughs> well, we have our cutesy little vest here and I think he looks so awesome. Now, the only thing I'm missing are my little ties to keep him closed when, um, well, when I don't have a shirt that's like attaching to it. Um, that's okay, I can add that on at a later time. What I wanna do before I actually close up my seam, which is still open here, um, is just quickly press my seams flat because we've had a lot of sculpting and things like that. So I just wanna make sure um, on a very low setting because this is, um, pretty artificial fabric. Um, I just want to make sure that my seams are nice and flat and there's no pulling or anything at all. So I'm just going to lay, lay my seams down and kind of roll, if you will. Just roll back just like that, just using my fingers just to kind of pull the seams nice and taut, which is good. And then we're just going to lightly steam it, give it a little heat, a little steam, and those should stay nice and flat for us. I just don't want to get the iron on the um, faux leather. I don't want it to um, dis disintegrate it. You know, that's one thing about working with uh, plastic fabrics is you can um, you can melt them, and that's not good. Um, do you make sure that if you have corners? and they are kind of just rounding like this. Take a little pin and just pull your fabric out so it gets to be a nice sharp crisp point. It's always good to do that. You're actually going to want to do that on all the points too. Anywhere you have a 90 degree, make sure you pull him out before you press. That steam is steamy. Thanks, Linz. Thanks for coming out, girl. Oh, 
I always like to blow away the steam as I'm pressing. If you hear me going, uh, it's me just blowing the steam away so I don't burn my hands. I really don't want to do that because I do not like steam burns. They do not feel good at all. So just pulling out my corners. Little heat, little steam. Just like on my little Instagram video the other day. I was shaping wool. It was fun. Shaping with a little heat and a little steam, making some sound panel samples. It was really cool. And I love when I get to play with wool and heat and steam. It's very neat. Okay. see any little furs that have gotten tucked example if you can see right there it's been tucked I just kind of go along with my just a straight pin and just kind of lately pull those little hairs out and uh, that way you get a nice even line of fluffies on the hem which is good Perfect. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to quickly find my ham. My ham. I'm going to quickly find my ham. I'm going to uh, steam my armholes, and then I'm going to sew the inside of the um, liner, and we'll be all done our project. Well, friends, I forgot to record a final once-over, so I'm just re-showing you again, which you've already seen, but the final vest looks just like this, and I promise to have a picture of me wearing it, not black on black, on my Instagram. So check me out on my Instagram, and you'll see the cutesy little vest we made.